I must say, when we when we uh, were preparing for this session, we we didn't really uh, know what to expect in terms of if it would be uh, uh, a topic uh, that was of interest for a lot of people. But I, I guess we have the answer because the the session is full, and I want to thank you first of all for uh, for showing up um, and listening to us for one hour um, talking about uh, career uh, philosophy and career development. Uh, my name is uh, Lisanne Bruns. I'm a technical lead at Microsoft for Modern Workplace, which means I cover all um, technology of Microsoft related to the workplace, uh, Windows 10, Office 365, uh, security, etc. And this is uh, Joris. Joris, you want to introduce myself? Say something. Yeah. yeah, so I'm a technology specialist at Microsoft for AI, as we call it. Yeah. Check. And uh, as you now know, we are not. Um, coaches or psychologists or anything like that. We are, we are techies, and, uh, but we have a, a passion for this topic and uh, we feel we have something to, uh, to share with you. But before we do, yeah, I'm not a uh, Emil Ratenband uh, guru kind of uh, chaka style, but we did uh, wanted to show a little movie to get you into this, you know, little bit of uh, inspirational uh, to start off the session with. If people say your dreams are crazy, if they laugh at what you think you can do, good. Stay that way. Because what non-believers fail to understand is that calling a dream crazy is not an insult. It's a compliment. Don't try to be the fastest runner in your school or the fastest in the world. Be the fastest ever. Don't picture yourself wearing OBJ's jersey. Picture OBJ wearing yours. Don't settle for homecoming queen or linebacker. Do both. Lose 120 pounds and become an Ironman after beating a brain tumor. Don't believe you have to be like anybody to be somebody. If you're born a refugee, don't let it stop you from playing soccer for the national team at age 16. Don't become the best basketball player on the planet. Be bigger than basketball. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. When they talk about the greatest team in the history of the sport, make sure it's your team. If you have only one hand, don't just watch football, play at the highest level. And if you're a girl from Compton, don't just become a tennis player. Become the greatest athlete ever. Yeah, that's more like it. So don't ask if your dreams are crazy. Ask if they're crazy enough. Again, my name is Lisanne Bruns. I want to tell you before we start the session a little bit more about myself. Um, I'm a technical lead and I truly believe that anything is possible if you've got the nerve. So I've done a lot of things during my career, but this is something that I always bring with me. And that's why the Nike video uh, really appeals to me because you know you can only dream as crazy as your imagination and then uh, just do it. So my career mission is to lead people into a world of new opportunities, to achieve things they haven't done before, and build success together. And this is my mission statement that I take with me in everything that I do. It's not uh, only related to the role I have right now, but it's something that I feel that I can bring to the table anytime I'm part of a project, any role that I will do now or in the past or in the future. And also it doesn't, yeah, it says career mission, but it's something that I try to bring along uh, also in my personal, uh, personal life. Uh, so how this plays out eh? and to share a little bit about uh, my own uh, journey. I studied artificial intelligence in, uh, at the University of Utrecht uh, here in the Netherlands. Uh, but I was uh, quite excited about that uh, technology wise. 
I sometimes like to think of myself as a little bit of a visionary, but reality was that I, I was really hard in making a decision of what I wanted to study. Uh, and artificial intelligence is about uh, many different things, such as um, math, uh, computer science, uh, but also neuroscience, psychology, and philosophy. So I, I think it had a little bit more to do with the fact that I didn't want to choose. After that, I uh, went on to uh, um, a psychology degree, <coughs> Um, and I traveled the world for, for two and a half years. Uh, during that world travel, I, I worked as a petty uh, scuba diving instructor. And this is the first real thing where you can see where I was able to uh, fulfill my mission because yeah, leading people into a world of new opportunities was at the time taking people who didn't know how to dive uh, into the underwater world uh, and explore it together and giving them that, uh, that, uh, yeah, that new feeling of entering a world there where they haven't uh, been or gone before. After that, I was in the role of a technical specialist uh, around enterprise mobility and security. And that was during a time when, you know, uh, the cloud was just something that was for a lot of enterprise uh, customers a little bit scary, uh, something new for sure. Um, so at the time, my, my, my mission, I could fulfill it um, by helping uh, customers to, to say, hey, um, I know it's scary, uh, but we've done it before, uh, and I'm here to lead the way and to help you make those next steps uh, into this new world of opportunities. Currently, I'm a technical lead for Modern Workplace, and, uh, which also means I manage, uh, means I manage a team uh, of 15 technical specialists at Microsoft. Uh, and this is new to me, so it's really an adventure last year when I, uh, I got this role. Uh, but now I really focus on helping my team, um, you, you know, to try uh, new things, to find the courage uh, to take next steps and, and to do things uh, that are maybe new uh, uh, for them as well. So you see that, you know, my mission is something that helps me. Uh, but it's also that something that I can fulfill in many different ways. A little bit more about me. Uh, I like to think of myself as an explorer, um, obviously yeah, with, the, with the traveling, but also just the way that I, I try to uh, be uh, in conversations, stay curious, etc. I'm a connector. I love bringing people together um, and connecting different uh, parts of the puzzle or different people uh, together. I'm a convincer. Well, when you're in sales, it's a little bit clear, but uh, yeah, I like to um, uh, tell a story and, and, and make people go along in it. And I love to create things. So in the end, it's for me, I have most fun in my work if there's some kind of end uh, product uh, or something like that. So this is just a way to, uh, to help you understand what, uh, what I'm like, where I thrive. Um, anytime when I'm in an environment, eh, this is what I need. I need challenge, I need dynamics, uh, and I need a lot of freedom. Uh, otherwise, I won't be happy. Uh, and what I bring to the table uh, is, I think, a few things. Positive leadership, technical inspirer, and I, I'm a strong driver for accountability uh, and result-driven. Um, why am I telling you this? Yeah, and this is the last uh, phrase. This is uh, not me, actually. I took the picture, so it's a, a friend of mine. But taking that <laughs> step into the water, uh, sometimes a little bit scary, but um, I think you should uh, do it anyway. And the reason why I'm sharing this story about me is uh, kind of to set up why uh, yours and I are, are giving this, uh, this session. Uh, because I think when I reflect back on my uh, own career, there were two kind of defining moments when it got kind of like a boost or I accelerated at, at a certain, uh, certain point for myself and also how I perceived uh, my work. And the first one, uh, which I think is really related to uh, diversity and inclusion, is when I stopped trying to be like others. So this was quite early in my career, um, but I think especially the first years, yeah, it was sometimes uncomfortable for me. Um, I was trying to figure out what was my place in this organization. Um, I sometimes felt like, oh, oh my God, I, I, don't, I shouldn't be here and at some point I'm going to get caught and they're going <laughs> to, 
you know, they're going to see that they made a mistake because what am I doing here? Uh, but also from a diversity perspective, I think, you know, maybe the obvious one is that when I started, I was the only uh, woman on the team. But actually, there were many other factors that made me feel more insecure, like being the youngest among uh, people that were often 10 years or more older than me, uh, having the least amount of experience. Um, but also, I found, you know, working in a technical team, I found that many people had only, that's what I thought, it's not true, but only were interested in technology. <coughs> Um, and I thought, oh, I want to do so many more things, but I didn't really feel there was uh, room to do that. Another aspect was that I, I worked for a big, uh, for, I started at Microsoft for a big American corporate company while all my friends were working for small, creative, startup kind of style companies. And, you know, that made me feel a little bit awkward too. And I really had to find um, the courage to say, okay, um, I don't have to be the same like the people around me. I can be me at work. Um, and by being me, I can actually add additional uh, value. So that was phase number one. The second one, so that's about uh, being, uh, being authentic maybe, but I guess a phrase we use quite a lot at Microsoft is um, do what you love and come as you are. And if everyone can do that when they come to work, we think we have the best value of our, uh, of our employees. It's also actually described by uh, uh, more research. So it's good, you know, I, I would like to, uh, I hope uh, everyone can be their se themselves at work because it's something that I, I, I wish for people. Uh, but it's also proven in research that's actually good for the company. Um, here you see a, a, a graph um, and this graph kind of shows that if you have uh, teams that are consistent of people that are like-minded, um, they go uh, in the beginning very fast. You can imagine, you know, if you're brainstorming and you're like, hey, I have this idea, oh yeah, yeah, I have the same idea, yeah, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. It's very easy to ramp up quickly. Uh, but in the end, it kind of slows down. So if you have more um, teams that are consistent of different people from different backgrounds and different perspectives, in the end, you'll get more innovative uh, ideas. But um, the crux is that in the beginning, it does take a little bit more time uh, to get that ball rolling because you're like, ah, I have this idea. And you're like, what are you talking about? That's really weird. And then you need to work together uh, to try to understand what the other person means. <laughs> and so you see that the purple line, the ramp up is kind of slower, but in the end, you'll get, uh, you'll get better results. So that's another way of looking why it's really important. Um, well, what I find is that um, that's nice theory, but it only works if people are actually comfortable with sharing their ideas. Because sometimes you're in a different team with different people with different ideas. But if then the people don't feel comfortable to speak up with their idea, yeah, you still lose. You're, you're maybe thinking you're on the purple line, but you still end up on the other, on the other curve. So that's why it's important too. Um, the second one, which I think really helped me, which was a few years ago, is being able to articulate what I come to do and what I bring to a project. And I talk about that, or we talk about that in the sense of finding your purpose. So if you know what your purpose is, and if you're able to share that with others and bring them along on that idea, I think it's boosting your career in such a way that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's super helpful. And I think that's uh, kind of the topic we want, to, uh, we want to help you with to make those first steps because finding your purpose might sound a bit fluffy <laughs> uh, to some, but I think we can have uh, a lot of, um, you know, um, practical framework steps that you can take uh, to build your own idea around that uh, and to use that in your day-to-day -day, uh, work. Good. So, finding your purpose. So, finding your purpose for me means the goal towards your going yourself in your career or contextually within your, uh, within your project. And this can be very easy and it can also be very hard. When I look at myself, and then I see two types of motions where I'm in. 
you see me presenting on stage over about AI, how cool AI is, about yeah, translations and uh, speech to text automatically, and I'm very confident and I know exactly what my purpose is. At that point, I know where I'm heading within this uh, presentation, but also in my career. I want to be something uh, very cool. But most of the time, I have no clue what my purpose is. Short term and long term. So, I, and I guess that holds for most of you. What I see when I uh, talk to people, some people are very clear on what they want to achieve. Some of them are not. So who is quite confident and can articulate what their purpose is? <laughs> yes, some. Yes. <laughs> Does anyone of you want to share? Yeah, you want to? You don't have to, but uh, yeah. We actually have a mic. Thank you. Uh, I think my, my purpose is related to creativity and it's uh, like bringing creativity in this world and uh, showing other people what I can do creatively. Cool. Great. Yeah. Good Perfect. one. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for Perfect. sharing. Perfect. So I think it's a plus. Yeah. It's <laughs> good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Thanks. So uh, this is a great purpose and the purpose is for everybody it's different, right? And in most cases, I don't know exactly what my purpose is short term and long term. And for me, it works to go through a process to define that. Huh? Sometimes I want to, uh, I'd like to say, okay, I want to do something else in my career. Let's define, uh, define my purpose first. And I follow a process. And I'm uh, going to share uh, the process. Is there an animation? No. So I'm going to share the process that I use um, for myself. And you can try to uh, see if that works for you. But there are different ways on uh, defining your purpose. So first of all, what is purpose? So purpose, and this is, I think, a, a good uh, explanation or a way of you, how you can look at it. it. It's the thing that makes you tick, right? What makes you get up in the morning? What gives you energy? What, uh, what is the thing that you are passionate about talking to your friends? And that usually defines three things that come together. First one, the things that you like to do things that you are very good at, where you excel at. And uh, the third one is what creates value. So this combination of these three is usually what is the purpose for you. Yeah. So when I try to define my purpose in different stages of my career, I usually start with the following. What have I done? And so I created here an overview, and this was uh, not that long ago, an overview of my career. So what have I done in my career? Because usually when you write this down, some things are highlighted in that, and that usually defines also what's important to me or what I'd like to do. So what you see here, I started this, uh, so I started here in the university. I studied algorithmic design, huh? so designing AI algorithms. Uh, so a lot of math. I did an internship in that, and then I started as a consultant, uh, and I started as a programmer. So really programming things, and over the time, I went from a programmer to an architect to a project manager, and suddenly I realized, well, managing people is fun, but that's not actually what I want to do in the long run. So then I had an... Uh, yeah, I wrote these things down and I realized I want to go back into technology. So you see me transitioning from Avanaat, so the consultancy organization, to Microsoft having a technical role. So I was a, a specialist in, in business intelligence, so Power BI, as we say, yeah, as a product. And now I'm moving into uh, more the AI space. So writing this down highlights a couple of things for me already from, okay, maybe I like technology, I'd like to work with clients, uh, I'd like to um, not stay within one organization, so to be customer-facing, see different things. So those are things that probably are important to me. So this is usually my first step when I try to define my purpose. The second step is to realize, okay, so over time I've learned things, I've matured in things, and writing that down. And I uh, usually do that in the, in the following way. So I take three main themes, in this case technology, things about relationships and about cultures. And then I write down, okay, where did I start? And what have I done over the time that makes me increase my scope? So from technology you see, from let's say programming stuff, all the way to systems, to architectures. 
from relationships. I started as, a, let's say, a developer working with engineers and things like that. And slowly I'm moving, uh, yeah, well, not upwards, but in a direction to technology leaders, but also in different industries. Yeah, so that's maturing and increasing my scope. And from a culture perspective, I worked in the Netherlands, I worked in China, I worked in the US, um, but I like the Netherlands the most. So I also highlighted things that I, well, appeal to me. So the Netherlands, I like the Netherlands, which is good. Uh, and I also like to work with technology leaders and uh, more an architecture thing. So this is already defining on the, uh, what I actually like. So having done that in defining my purpose, so I know what I've done, I know my, uh, what I've learned and what I, uh, what I uh, like in that. And then I usually create a word cloud on these three themes. And uh, I write down the topics that are important to me. So what you see here in relationships, so those are usually slightly different words, but uh, do, writing this down makes it clear to me what is important to me. So you see in relationship, I like leadership and a couple of uh, industries and technologies. I like, well, uh, AI. Um, it would be funny if it wasn't there. And things with data and architectures and in, uh, in a culture perspective, I'd like to work in an international environment, but also in the Netherlands, as I uh, learned in my previous slide. So this is one way of um, uh, def uh, coming towards your purpose. But there are different ways of doing that. And I think it would be good to do a small exercise, exercise for that. Exercise, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'm not sure if everyone read the abstract, otherwise you might be a little bit uh, overwhelmed right now. But this is an interactive session, so we're going to put you to work a little bit. Uh, and we put in at a few uh, of our little chapters that we want to cover a worksheet that you can also take home and then uh, work on on your own um, to kind of help you know you know uh, have your thinking process because. I think in my mind, and I think yours explained also, writing it down uh, sometimes makes it more clear. Even though you think you know, it's good to put it in words and to see it in front of you. And kind of the worksheets can give you kind of like a head start to kind of think about what you could write down. Uh, because oftentimes I think when we're thinking about things like personal development, you then sit down uh, behind your PC, <laughs> probably in the evening or on a Sunday afternoon, and you're like, now I'm gonna think about personal development, yes. <laughs> and so these working sheets can give you kind of like an, a, a, a little way of, of starting. So things to think about when you're thinking about uh, um, uh, inspiration purpose is, you know, what truly inspires you? And you don't really have to start with you. You can think about um, what are companies that inspire you, what are people that inspire you, and then think about, you know, what. Um, what are the elements of those companies or those people that you find inspirational? Maybe it's easy. Or we say, oh, Microsoft, yeah, we find it inspiring. Or another company. And then we're like, yeah, 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 I agree. But maybe it's you have a different reason why you think it's inspiring than I have. And so it's important to write that down as well. Motivators is more about what, what makes you get up in the morning. Um, it's that energy balance, you know, some days are energy drains and some days you end up with a lot of energy. What are the things you've done on that day that motivate, that fuel you? And conditions of satisfaction is a bit more basic, but it's also important to think about what are those elements that are just like fundamentals. They're maybe not the ones that make you tick, but the, they are the ones that need to be in your job. And if you take them away, um, then you wouldn't like it anymore. So for me, for example, having a certain amount of freedom, it's not like I go, right, oh, I have so much freedom, but I know that if I wouldn't have it, I would hate the job. So those are conditions of, of satisfaction. Write that down. And we wanted to do a little exercise with you today about inspirational brands. So uh, we wanted to ask you, and we'll ask two or three people if they're uh, interested. For now, everyone, think about two or three brands that you find very inspirational, the ones that you, when you read about them in the in the news, you're like, wow, you know, that that is really cool. Or uh, no, no, sorry, I just put we put some on the slide to uh, get your minds going. But please, <laughs> I, it's actually better, I guess, if uh, it's not on the slide. And since you already spoke up, maybe you want to share, or did you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah? 
So one inspirational br uh, brand and why you find it inspirational? Okay, the brand is called SciSport and it's basically a, a brand which does AI and machine learning on soccer. And basically what they did is uh, they created a database of all football players, like uh, basically like football manager in FIFA where they rate the players. And they started in Enskede and they are now they have like this huge database and now they are basically a data scout for all kinds of football clubs like Arsenal, Ajax, yeah. these kind of companies. And they are like consulting for those companies. Yeah. And I think it's very inspiring how they did it, like just some young dudes like me and uh, they have a very cool company. <laughs> cool. cool. Thank you. And I think it's good because you added it in the second part. So you can describe the company, what they do, but the part is in why do you think. So you name AI and sport. I'm like, okay, I love AI and sport. I think it's inspirational too. But the fact that you added, ah, it's young people starting this from scratch, I think is where you're hitting your, um, what makes it inspirational for you. One more person. I'm gonna walk slowly this way, maybe. I see someone, I'm gonna run. Yes, we uh, have a lot to cover, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I think recently it's Microsoft because of their open source policy and uh, how they release uh, .NET Core, how they go to that direction. Uh, so that's really inspiring that they work more close with the community now. And yeah, that's something that inspires me. Yeah. And can I then ask, so obviously feeling blessed that you name the company that I work for, but is it for you because it's open source and you love open source? Or is it maybe because of the change that was made? Or is it, you know, what, what is it for yeah, you? I, see, I think it's because of the open source and that I like to share stuff with the community. Okay. And that's something I value. And uh, Microsoft started doing that and that's good. And that's yeah. what inspires me. So I think that's key, right? So, so thank you very much for sharing that because it's actually in the explanation where you said this open source is core to my values as a sharing uh, mechanism. And that's what's important to you. Very, very good example. One more, maybe? Yes. That's the last one. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Vizia Hood, it's a very small company no one has probably heard of, but it inspires me because it was started by my friend and I've seen it grow from the start. And that kind of makes it seem like it's possible and that's why it inspires me. Ah, it gives you, <laughs> it gives you courage. <laughs> Thank you, that's a real good one. Thank you so much. Okay, so, you know, do this exercise for yourself, make yourself, challenge yourself, or let someone else challenge you to ask a deeper question of why, uh, and then find out a little bit about your own values and, uh, and, and things in that inspire you. The second topic we wanted to talk about is what do you do best? And this is also some, something that I find managing a team, a lot of people on my team say, yes, yes, I know my skills, you know, they haven't changed. And, These are my core strengths. For me, uh, for example, being enthusiastic is something that um, I know will, it's always been there. It will probably never go away. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, uh, um, uh, a little bit obvious. Uh, it's actually quite funny. I, I once, a few years ago, I sent a, a small snippet of what my boss wrote about me to my parents. And my mom replied, oh, it's actually the same as in kindergarten. <laughs> like, oh, you're so social and you're always enthusiastic. And yeah. <laughs> But there are also things that are maybe a little bit less, uh, less obvious. And there's one particular way where um, I feel that uh, it can help you um, um, write down what, what you do best uh, beyond those two or three uh, obvious, uh, obvious ones. And... Not everyone is a fan of it, but I am, is a personality test. So personality tests sometimes can feel like they're putting you into a square or they are, you know, labeling you um, as a certain uh, person. It can uh, almost feel like, uh, um, how do you say, horoscope in English? Like, uh, uh, um, does someone know? <laughs> Uh, it, can, it can feel like, you know, it's, it's kind of out of a little bit random and then it has to say something about you and you're like, okay, well, I don't know, um, doesn't feel very comfortable. <coughs> However, you don't have to, you know, identify fully uh, with what is written down, but it can help you 
get this head start of thinking about certain things. So one that we use at Microsoft uh, is MBTI. Uh, but there are a lot of different ones. Um, maybe you heard about DISC or, you know, the ones with the colors. Or there's so many different types around. Um, but the MBTI can also be done. Uh, actually, there's a website called 16personalities.com where you can do it uh, in 15 minutes. Um, a result rolls out. It's free. Uh, and uh, again, don't use it as an exact science, but leverage it as a way to get your mind going on certain things. So here I like it because they put in like, um, uh, you know, nice comics and uh, they give the one a name. So I'm over here. I'm uh, the campaigner and the campaigner actually. And, and the fun thing is they also put uh, celebrities that are similar to you. <laughs> So I'm related to Will Smith, I think, <laughs> but um, um, it's funny to read. And the campaigner, actually, I, I, I do feel I can kind of identify with uh, the, the picture here <laughs> underneath. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't have to think that everything what is written here is about me. But you do see that there are a lot of, um, yeah, the text is quite small, but, you know, energetic oh. and enthusiast is there. Um, um, what does it say? Curious is something that I can very much uh, relate to. Uh, true free spirit appeals to me. Life at the party, I don't know, you should ask my friends maybe, but uh, I think there are some things that I recognize and what I would advise you is just highlight those things that, are, that stand out for you. It's a way to get started. Then second of all, this very known um, um, table, it's called the Johari Window. Uh, it's about that you obviously know things where you're good at, where others also know where you're good at. Uh, but there's also a lot that's still in the unknown. So there are things um, that are known to others, uh, but are not known to you. So maybe something like, uh, I see a lot of people on my team that have certain leadership skills that they're maybe a little bit shy about themselves, but it's very evident for, for the people around them. Uh, and also sometimes things are unknown to you and unknown to others. Maybe there's this secret skill that you haven't tapped into yet so that you can still uh, explore. But I think that blind spot is really important. And um, the blind spot um, is actually something that you can, uh, uh, you can start exploring uh, by asking for feedback. So the second worksheet uh, that I would encourage you to uh, start working with uh, at home it's really about personal skills. Just write what's top of mind. Use the, um, uh, the things that you find in the, in the personality tests and write everything down. Uh, and you kind of can, you know, divide that in more personal uh, characteristics um, and maybe more your work style. So I'm a very result-driven uh, person. I take a lot of ownership. Uh, so those are things that were more related to my, uh, to my work style. And then the last one is asking that feedback. So feedback is very important, uh, but in my uh, mind, it's very sometimes hard, um, first of all, to ask, but also to give. We also say, oh, you have to ask feedback and it's scary. But the person who's giving feedback, that's also sometimes uh, a little bit difficult um, because people often go like, oh, can you give me feedback? And then you have to go like, oh, what do I want to say? How do I say it? How do I make sure that in this moment I, I cover it right? So actually, as the person asking the feedback, I think it's important to help that person that's giving you feedback a little bit uh, by guiding them, uh, not in a certain direction, like <laughs> more positive, or <laughs> but more in like, where do you want to get feedback? Make it concise of where you want to get feedback on. Uh, so you can go very broad, like um, explore questions like uh, ask your family and friends, if I wasn't in IT, what would I be doing? That's a very interesting one. Um, I think I got from organizing festivals to creating a world with green energy. So, but again, there, it's about ask those people, why do you say that? What are the elements? What, what, what makes that uh, related to you? In your work, maybe find something that you, you specifically want your coworkers to, uh, to give feedback on. Um, uh, for example, hey, relating back to that example of, uh, of leadership, um, it's good to, if that's something you're exploring, ask people, and sometimes it's scary, but ask people, do you see me as a leader? Why or why not? 
if you would start a company tomorrow and you can bring five people along, would I be one of them? Why and why not? If I would be on that five people, you can give me any role that you, can, that you want, what would it be? Those are good questions to kind of help your feedback giver <laughs> um, to, to help their, uh, their minds going as well. And uh, again, time for a little uh, practicing. <laughs> so um, I want uh, to do a little bit, bit of an experiment. So this is not one person or three persons, but it's actually everyone. So we're going to have one minute where I want you to introduce yourself to the person next to you quite briefly, just who you are, what do you do. And after that, I want both of you to give each other back three words uh, that came up in your mind on the first impression that you got from uh, that person. So it's a little bit, uh, I haven't done this before, but uh, I'm going to be strict on time. So look at the person next to you, and I'm going to give you one minute starting now. <laughs> I hope it was, uh, I think it was a little bit more than three words, but sounded good, so <laughs> well done. Um, does someone want to share? How did that feel? Did you learn something new? Um, I did such kind of exercises all before, so for me it wasn't a new thing. I uh, did a personal development session this weekend, mm -hmm. actually. So, cool. Um, I think it's very valuable on sharing with the people around you. And it's also giving a way of knowing the people in a different way. And that can be helpful in any team. Yeah. And what I learned today uh, here was that even with, that we're at a tech conference, everybody wants to do this. Yeah. And I like that. Cool, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's a good point because I think in any team but it doesn't really matter in which industry you are. Uh, it's good to share these kind of things and save time for it in your team meetings or yep. something like that. True. Yeah, thank yep. you. Thank you. Anyone else can be about the exercise or just a other thoughts? Did someone learn something new? Not really. <laughs> oh, you're so scared. <laughs> Yes. Oh. No running. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really yeah, valuable uh, part of the, of the talk. And uh, I think the most important thing is that uh, today I realized that it's important to just uh, stop at some point and do like self-reflection and like use this uh, sheets to uh, basically analyze your, your behavior. How are you, like what is your uh, position in life right now? And then make some assumptions based on that. So not just flow and then let things happen, but at some point it's important to, to stop and, uh, and think it's where you're going, what do you want in your life? And uh, yeah, that's important. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, and I think it's also, uh, maybe you didn't learn something new, um, but being able to articulate and uh, also helping others um, uh, to understand uh, you best um, takes a lot of, uh, in a collaboration with your team or with uh, with your customers or whatever, um, it it speeds up things. It can really give it uh, give it a boost. The more clarity you have, um, the better, I think. The last um, circle on the uh, purpose slide is uh, what creates value, and uh, or what creates impact and. Impact and value are kind of these, you know, terminology is, uh, it's very broad. I mean, impact is also about, I can tell you what I think creates impact and your boss can also probably tell, tell you what, what creates impact. Um, but for me, impact is also very much about um, where do you find it's important to have impact? So it's very much related to what you personally think is, uh, is important. And this, um, this, uh, um, picture is actually from a commercial we did. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, aware about the Xbox team. 
uh, kind of separate as, uh, as their business, they uh, started this project where they wanted to make a controller that was actually uh, usable for people that have uh, accessibility challenges. So here you see a kid and I think he has something on his uh, uh, hands and uh, he can use this pad to actually play games with the Xbox. And that's for, for a lot of people in the Xbox team that was really about, you know, um, besides their daily, uh, daily work where they really felt they made an impact because they changed, were able to change the lives of these, uh, these kids and these, uh, these people. Uh, and so it's just, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily, impact can mean many, many different, different things. But most important is that you know what is impactful for you or what you think is important to have impact. And there, I think it's really coming, so you can talk about impact separately, but to me, it's really more about everything in these three circles needs to be combined in order to hit that sweet spot, you know, where you really feel like, oh my God, this is what I'm doing now. It's such a, you know, I'm shining. I'm like, you know, making best use of my skills. This was such a great day. It's those days where you... Um, actually uh, at home or in a bar with your friends are still talking about work like, wow, what I did now was so, uh, so cool because, because it had impact probably. So, uh, so that's uh, where there is the relationship. And a way to think about that is something that uh, I, uh, it's, uh, it's a theory called great work. Um, and we have a little video on it, uh, which can explain it a little bit uh, better. Uh, than me, but it's about that that shining moment, that uh, that moment when you're hitting the nail. Uh. Let me see.
So great work. So the videos on YouTube and also definitely go to Box of Crayons, which is um, the people who came up with this uh, this theory, because there's a lot of assets there. But I love this. Oh, uh, this not again. <laughs> uh, um, I love this theory because you know it's it really describes that moment. It's scary. It creates. It, it makes a difference. You're using all of your skills. You're in it. Um, and so the exercise here is to really write down uh, what is for you um, bad work. Bad work, uh, yeah, it uh, feels useless, it's, uh, it drains your energy, um, it has to be done you know, as part of your job. Uh, maybe admin kind of things. Um, good work, um, good work uh, is, uh, I think in the video I say, it's just your job description. Um, I hope you love it. That's why we describe it as good work. It's just your daily days, your, your things that you do, uh, the things you probably like doing. Um, but it's not, you know, those moments where you, at the end of the day, of a day of good work, you don't go home like, wow, I had a meeting with a colleague. You know, it's just a regular meeting, but so good. <laughs> no, it's those those projects that you work on that are a little bit different, they're a little bit scary, they push you a little bit more into trying things you haven't done before. It's something that, you, that you're that you proud of if you look back on the on the last few years. It's for me, for example, I had great work is, um, I, I think about moments where I was really like, yeah, in Dutch we say like flaming. I don't know, like, I think there was some fire in the video as well, but you know, I. I remember this moment where I was talking to one of the largest companies in the Netherlands and to their um, um, CISO, so their chief uh, information security officer. And I convinced him in that moment, it was just like a 15 or 20 minute presentation um, to invest in Microsoft. And those are the moments where I, ha I have never, I didn't talk to a CISO of such a big company before. And it really all came together of what I, uh, what I did. And, you know, I can really, it's already been two years ago, but I can really vividly still, uh, still remember. I was sweating a little bit. My colleagues were actually more nervous than me, um, which, uh, yeah, had an effect as well. Um, or, for example, it's those moments for me now where I'm coaching people and someone comes back and they say, wow, I really achieved something that I, I thought I would never do before. It makes me feel proud. And those are the, uh, the, all the other one-on-ones that I have met my, with my people. I love too, but there's those ones where you really feel that you made a difference that stand out uh, for me as, uh, as great work. Um, we want to do a little exercise again. Uh, I think it's the last exercise for today. And um, I encourage you to yeah, go home and, and think about bad work, good work, and great work. And also think about what percentage of your time do you spend in each category? Uh, because having too much bad work might need to rethink some things or think about the next step. But having no great work at all is also a, a clear sign that maybe you are too long in the same role doing the things that you're comfortable in. If you have a lot of great work, you might be uh, getting a little bit uh, overworked here because we can't all peak all the time, you know, if you feel like you're always uh, doing it. <laughs> I want you to take a second. This is just an individual exercise. I'm going to set it on 30 seconds, a bit challenging. Think about the last moment where you felt you were doing great work, where you were in the zone, where you were uh, at that spot. Uh, can be last week can also be uh, a year or two years ago, um, but I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about it. Who wants to share? I haven't yet. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I broke the seal uh, for cross-functional collaboration within the IT uh, different uh, specializes. And what do you call it? Yes, yeah, specializations. Yeah. Specializations. Yeah. Yeah. And what did you do? You brought them together? Um, yeah, well, I basically broke the seal and opened the door a little bit because it was firmly closed. And, yeah. um, you know, it's a start and hopefully it'll widen more and more as time goes by. More magic will happen. Thank you. Good one. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, it's easy for me. Thank you. I was a digital investigator of sex crimes mm -hmm. and there was a case where uh, it was a horrible rape of a little girl and uh, the girl was not believed because there was no evidence and the evidence was not uh, readable. 
um, there were five other persons that already took uh, uh, took a look at the evidence, but nobody uh, got it done. But within two days, I got it done. Wow. And um, after one or two weeks, I read in the newspaper that the, the victim uh, was able to uh, walk on the street again because she was afraid uh, so before. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah. That's, uh, thank you for sharing. And that's impact right there, right? Very uh, evident. Thank you. That's, I can imagine that is something that you feel very proud of. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? He raised the bar. <laughs> there you go. I managed to eliminate uh, our estimation in our scrum team Ooh. because I think that's a waste of time. Very well done. <laughs> yeah, we can applaud for that as well. <laughs> Thank you. One more. I always think uh, yeah, people, I, 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 that's why we call the session personal career philosophy. A lot of times I hear managers talk about personal development. I think it's also very important to look at where you maybe um, um, uh, maybe uh, have some challenges in your own personality. But I like to focus on the positive things and the great work and feel a little bit like bragging, but it's important to, uh, to be proud of what we do. So I'm going to ask one more uh, person looking at this uh, crowd. You can't go again because you went twice. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, anyone else? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, we, uh, I work at Verlandschot Camp and we had a hackathon in uh, January and we uh, decided to build an, uh, in Microsoft Power Apps an app to call in sick. Okay. So when you are sick, uh, you, know, you can inform uh, HR, but you can also inform colleagues with a specialized message, uh, customized message, uh, I, start an out of office, etc., etc. So uh, that's what we made as a team. And um, I was a team leader, but yeah. I didn't know anything about development uh, of the tool. So it was uh, a <laughs> step into something new. But um, yeah, when I look at the results, it was uh, very nice. And uh, yeah, we uh, will implement it very soon. Cool. Yeah. cool. So it's a combination between you push yourself to do something you haven't done before. Yeah. Uh, but also, zone. I can yes. imagine a lot of people were happy with the app. Happy with the app, but also within the team, uh, lots of fun. Uh, in, in one, two days, uh, yeah, we, we managed to create an app uh, who's functional. Uh, cool. Yes. Cool. Well done. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's a good example. And also, you know, I, I think we can clap. We started clapping, so <laughs> well done. Thank you for sharing. And for that, you know, as a takeaway, when you're thinking about these kind of things, write down for you. What was it exactly that made you feel like it was great work? Was it that was new? Or it can be multiple things, but yeah, I think you mentioned new. Um, you changed people's lives. So also, <laughs> not, <laughs> but it had an impact on people. Uh, but also the team spirit. It was fun. It's an important one uh, to, to call out how important that is for you. I'm going to hand off to oh. yours. Very good. Oh, for the last. Sorry. <laughs> so we have shared... A couple of things that we use at Microsoft to, uh, to define your purpose, uh, know where you're going, know yourself. And we see that people doing that, not, not on a daily basis, but regularly, boost their career. Right? But there is one thing missing that is actually starting to do things. Yeah? So taking control of uh, where you're heading, where you want to go to, and things like that. So that has to do with leadership or let's say personal leadership. So if you look at the definition of personal leadership, you can look it up in line and it says, uh, so to define your direction and then take the action, move towards in that direction. So that's actually uh, more or less what the session is about. And when you do that, you will see, or in, in, at least in my experience, you will indeed move forward with your career in the, well, the way you would like to. Um, so, and taking action, has to do, and this is, the, I think, the last model we're going to share, or one or more or less, is that it has to do with your mindset. Yeah? So if you mindset, that is your viewpoints, your attitude, where you are today, based on that, you can make decisions and then take action, and that will eventually lead to results. So your mindset is critical in starting to take control and moving your career in the right direction. I think this is fundamental. Uh, if you don't have the right mindset, nothing will happen. 
I think that's uh, very easy. And at Microsoft, we use, uh, and so that has to do with behavior as well, uh, your own behavior, and reflecting on that uh, helps you move in the right direction. At Microsoft, we use, um, uh, yeah, it's also a video, but let's say a model, whether your behavior, and that is, is in general, so that can be contextual, but also for your career, but also in a project, but whether your behavior is above the line or below the line. <coughs> so this is a very simple uh, simple method. And we have a short video of, uh, and of course, an American guy, because we're an American company, that explains the difference between above the line behavior and below the line behavior. And will it run automatically, or do I need to? Play. Yeah. Hi, my name is James Ashford, business coach and rocker of worlds. And what I want to talk about today is something that's had a huge effect on my life and has a big impact on my clients' life and especially on the, their teams that they have in their businesses. And it's all about an above or below the line attitude. I don't know if you've come across this before, but basically above the line is all about ownership, acceptance and responsibility. And below the line is blame, excuses and denial. And it comes down to where is your response? Where, are your, where is your, does your attitude lie? Is it an above the line or a below the line response? Now, the, the most important one above the line for me is responsibility. By accepting responsibility for everything, it means that you are able to respond. Let me say that again. By accepting responsibility, it puts you in a position where you are able to respond. And this is a very powerful position. It means that we can do something about it. While ever we're blaming other people, making excuses or denying that it's happening, it keeps us out of power. It makes us a victim. It means that we can do nothing about it at all. And while you, it's nice to think that you're an above the line kind of guy or kind of gal, very often it's easy to creep below the line. Let me give you a couple of examples. I was working with a client recently and uh, they were making, trying to make some sales. And when I was speaking to him, he says, you know what, the client, they're just not getting back to me. I'm not making the sales because they're not getting back to me. Now, straight away, I could say, listen, is that an above the line or below the line response? Well, it's a below the line because you're blaming the customer. They've not got back to me. Let's take it above the line, okay? Taking that same response above the line is, I've not got back to them. Now, as soon as you say, I've not got back to them, it puts you in a position of control because it means you can get back to them. You can do something about it. The same guy was talking to me and he says, yeah, I've not made as many sales because the customers just can't buy. They couldn't afford it. Yeah. Take it above the line again, mate. Listen, taking it above the line means how can you help them to afford it? How can you help them to purchase your product? What finance deals can you put in place? As soon as you accept responsibility for everything that's happening, it means that you are able to do something about it. Listen, nothing is happening to you. Everything is happening because of you. And as soon as you accept that one fact, it means that you can start taking control of your life and taking control of everything that is happening to you. Now, go to my website, jamesashford.com, look in the resources section, and I've created this above the line and below the line poster for you. Download, it's a completely free thing. Get it pinned up on your wall and ask your team. This is really good for your staff. So when they're saying things, you say, why hasn't this happened or why has this happened? Listen to what their response is and then very quickly can say, is that an above the line or a below the line response? Get them on board. This one thing will really drive things forward. It keeps everybody's attitude totally positive. It never allows any negativity to creep in and it really generates massive results, which you are in control of. Guys, live above the line. Okay, so um, I think this is a very simple model. Huh? You, uh, in, I use it not to give feedback to others, like you're above or below the line behavior, huh? what you're doing now, but I use it as reflection for myself in a day-to-day -day basis before I usually respond. Huh? So, uh, oh, is this a, a, a below or be, uh, above the line behavior that I'm going to uh, respond towards uh, some other person? And uh, it's also good for your career, right? If you take responsibility, it's b above the line behavior, and then you move forward. And I think it's uh, a very useful, simple, uh, simple tool. Good. I think so. We have uh, two minutes left. I wanted to wrap up by um, 
uh, uh, reminding you uh, about our mission statement when it comes to this. And I hope you can bring that with you. Do what you love and uh, come as you are. Try to live it every, every day. Um, and I wanted to wrap up by just summarizing what we talked about. So being authentic started with the video of Nike, um, but try to uh, uh, see what, uh, uh, try to be as, uh, as uh, much comfortable with being who you are, because eventually then the world will get the best out of you. Find your purpose. It's difficult. Don't take it for granted. Really being able to articulate what your purpose is is the goal here. So do spend some time with some of the exercises. There's a lot of things online that you can find as well. Find your own way. Uh, it can be on the back of a, a, a piece of paper uh, or it can be a, a full end PowerPoint presentation or CV, resume, video that you can send out applying for your next role. Uh, but get it clear in your head. Uh, how you would articulate your, uh, your own purpose. Uh, and then last thing, taking control. Above or below the line, nobody's above the line all the time. So we all have our days, sometimes you're tired or that person really annoys you. But uh, taking that uh, with you as some guidance that you can uh, do um, to, uh, to, uh, to take control of what you want to achieve is, I think, a very valuable uh, last piece of advice. That was our session, and uh, we want to thank you all for showing up in such big numbers. This was a little bit of an experiment for us. We hope you liked it. So if uh, you have feedback, come and find us after the session. And uh, good luck with uh, taking control of your career. <laughs> Thank you.